hope everybody is doing well today. Um, I am sitting down to record something, which I haven't done in a while, um, so I'm pretty excited about it. I'm really sorry if I look super icky today. Um, I am going through it right now with some shit going on. Um, I'm not going to share like what it is. I promise I'm okay. Um, it's just something that's have affecting me very heavily right now, um, but I feel motivated to um, script and like film this video right now, so I'm going to take advantage of that. So about four years ago, I uploaded a video all about wig care, washing wigs, detangling wigs, and storing them, and I also kind of showed off my collection. Um, and it's been, you know, like four or five years since I uploaded that video, and um, I think it was like two days ago I got an email that there's like a copyright claim on it, and it's not like a strike, like it's not counting against me or anything, but I've been meaning to update that one for a while anyway. Um, because in the past like five years I've learned a lot more about wigs and times have kind of changed a little bit with how things are done and my opinions on how things should be done. Um, so that copyright notice was just kind of like, hmm, maybe I should like make an updated one of these. <laughs> As a side note, it doesn't really matter that I got a copyright notice on that video because I still can't put ads on my videos anyway, so I wasn't making any money off of that video anyway. Um, but now whoever wrote that Vocaloid song is getting money for that video that has 40,000 views. So um, yeah, I'm probably not going to keep that video up forever. So if you guys do enjoy that one for whatever reason, go ahead and watch it before I take it down. Um, I know like I'm really weird and I like to watch people's old videos even if they aren't relevant anymore because I'm a big weirdo. So just a fair warning. Let's stop beating around the bush and let's just get right into it. So something that I never covered in that first original video that I do want to cover now um, is where I personally buy my wigs. This honestly hasn't changed that much in the past few years, um, but I have been kind of branching out a little bit. There are definitely pros and cons to each of these different places, um, and there's lots of other shops besides the ones I'm going to talk about today. Um, so feel free to like do a lot of Google searching and digging and watching other people's content to figure out where you want to be buying your wigs from, but this is just what I do. So the first place that I buy most of my wigs from is Arda Wigs. Um, I feel like most cosplayers nowadays shop at Arda. Of course, none of the ones that I just pulled out are from Arda. One second. So some basic information, Arda is a wig company, and I, obviously, <laughs> um, I believe they're based in Chicago, so it's really nice for me as somebody who cosplays in Wisconsin because their shipping is super quick for me. They really only sell synthetic wigs, so if you're for some reason looking for real hair wigs, I would not recommend going to Arda or really any of the places I'm going to be talking about today. As an aside, real human hair wigs aren't really a thing that most cosplayers deal with because they're really, really expensive, and for our purposes, they just usually aren't very practical. So this wig is looking a little bit crazy because I haven't worn it in literally an entire year. Um, but this is one of my oldest wigs from Arda. If you guys watched my original wig care video, this was feature featured in it. Um, this is a buttercup, I believe in like pumpkin orange or something. Um, I recently used it for Retzko about a year ago um, and it was tied in a bun, which is why it looks like this. <laughs> Some pros about Arda is that their fibers are pretty natural looking. Um, they're not like super shiny. A lot of wigs that you buy that are cheaper than Arda um, are pretty shiny and crappy looking, especially like ones that you get at a Halloween store. If you're a beginner in cosplay, do yourself a favor and please do not buy wigs from like Party City or Halloween stores because they just really, really look awful. Um, whereas something like this looks a lot more natural. Like it still has a little bit more shine than my natural hair does. Um, because it's plastic, but it's it's really not bad <laughs> and it looks really nice in photography, so that's a plus. Their wigs are also really thick. I'm not sure if you can see, but there's a ton of wefts in here, um, which makes it look, again, really nice and you can like kind of part these and you can't really see any of the wig netting underneath, which is always nice. Arda also has a really huge array of colors and special styles that you can do. I usually get all of my ponytail wigs from Arda. Um, this one is for Madarasu, the one that I have not finished yet. Um, it's been very heavily modified from how it is sold in stores, but um, it's got like the wefts on the side that pull over so that you don't have any weird wig cap stuff going on. There's a nice skin cap at the front so that you can part the bangs forward. Um, so this is a really nice one. They also have pigtail styles. I used one of those for my um, Mew Mint costume, which a lot of you guys seem to really like on Instagram. Um, it's literally just their uh, pigtail style with Odongo on it. 
Yeah, they have a ton of selections, so I really enjoy going to them. Some of the cons, um, the, again, this is kind of an older wig and it's kind of ratty, so it's not super fair for me to say this, but um, their wigs tangle pretty easily, I find. Um, like, I can run my fingers through it, but there's definitely tangles in it. Um, they have two lines of fibers. They have classic fibers and silky fibers. The classic fibers, I find, are better for styling. Um, so if you're doing any spikes, any teasing, um, they're really going to stand up and do all the gravity-defying stuff that you want them to do. Uh, but if you're just wearing them down like this, you're really going to need to brush it out through the day or else it's just going to turn into a huge rat's nest. Their silky line is meant to be smoother and tangle less because they are aware that their classic line tangles pretty badly. Um, but I have found that the silky line looks a little bit shinier. Um, so it's kind of a give and take with that. Also, since so many people are ordering from Arda nowadays, um, I do find that a lot of the time they have stuff that is on back order or out of stock. Um, so it's kind of difficult now to order from them last minute. You really need to plan ahead for when you're going to be ordering for them. They do post um, restock updates so you can see like, okay, this is when they're going to be getting this wig and this color in. Um, and that helps you plan a little bit, but I do find it really frustrating that they seem to never have anything in stock. <laughs> I recently ordered an Umbreon wig um, for late July, like almost August. I ordered it a couple weeks ago and it's on back order, so um, it's supposed to be in the June restock, but I'm still nervous about whether or not it's going to be here, and I feel like I don't have to, like, I don't run into that when I order from other wig companies, so that's also something that you should pay attention to. That was a super long rant about Arda. I really like them, um, but they also do have some problems, so if I'm not able to order from Arda for whatever reason, I usually go to Epic Cosplay. Now, I haven't ordered from Epic all that many times. I think I only have two or three wigs from them, um, but I really love their wigs. So this wig is from Epic. I used it for um, a rave costume that I did at ASUN. It was from the uh, Yaoi dating sim to Trust and Incubus. My friend and I did femme versions of a couple of the characters. If you guys are familiar with the game, I highly doubt that you are. Um, I cosplayed Devi. Um, so I ended up getting this guy and just pulling it into a ponytail. As you can see with this, it's a little bit shinier than Arda, not too bad. I find that with Epic, their fibers tangle way less. Like, I literally wore this at a rave, and like, it's really not awful. They separate pretty easily. To be fair, this wig is a lot shorter than that other one, but still. <laughs> there is still a pink feather in this. The last time I wore this, I was a little intoxicated, and I think I just threw it on the floor after wearing it. So that's why there's a feather in it. Epic usually has things in stock pretty much right away, so like this one I had to order really last minute. I think I got it like two weeks before ASUN. Uh, it came in like three days, it was super fast, and it was exactly what I wanted. As far as I know, they don't have as quite as big of a selection as Arda, and I think their website is a little bit harder to navigate, but I really, really love their wigs. Like, I have been pushing Epic on my friends for a few months now because a lot of us are frustrated with Arda, and I'm like, please get Epic, they're so good. Um, they are also very thick, they have about the same number of wefts inside as Arda does. Um, so if you guys are looking for an alternative to Arda wigs, I would definitely suggest Epic Cosplay. If you are looking for a cheap and easy wig, might I suggest Amazon. So this one I didn't buy myself, um, so I'm like 95% sure it's from Amazon. I'm not in contact with the person that sold this to me anymore. We used to be friends. Not anymore. That's a whole thing. It doesn't matter. Um, but this is my Madoka wig. As you can see, this one's actually not bad. Um, the thing about Amazon wigs is that they are very hit or miss. <laughs> this one, um, we ended up getting one that's like pretty thick on the inside. It looks like as heavily wefted as Epic or Arda, which is really nice. Sometimes you end up with wigs that are um, really thin or really shiny or the color is wrong. One time my friend and I ordered a Miku wig and they just didn't send the pigtails with it and then they didn't give us a full refund for it, so that was really cool. But like this wig was like 20 bucks, 15 or 20 bucks, and it was it's pretty good. I would say definitely check the reviews before you buy a wig off of one of these sites or from a seller on one of these sites because like I said, it can be really hit or miss and you can get some really bad wigs. If it's for a costume that you don't care about or if you just are really on a budget and you can't afford to spend $35 on a wig from Arda, um, I think that Amazon can be a good resource for you. 
Okay, so now that you've hopefully figured out um, where you're buying your wig, or hopefully you have one already, I'm just going to touch on how to wash a wig. I actually don't have any to wash currently, um, so I'm just going to talk you guys through it and I hope that's okay. So I usually wash my wigs in the sink. Um, I will just plug the sink up and fill it with um, lukewarm water. If it's a curly wig, I'll usually try to go a little bit on the colder side just because heat will relax the curls and I wanna make sure that I'm not doing that. Um, so just be careful with your temperature. One thing that a lot of people commented on on my first original wig care video was the fact that I use human hair shampoo on my wigs. This is like a whole thing and it really doesn't matter in the scheme of things, but some people were very upset at me for using human hair shampoo. Let me explain. First of all, it doesn't matter. Wig shampoo is something that you have to buy like separately if you're gonna do that. Um, it's specifically made for synthetic hair, which is what our wigs are made out of when we're cosplayers. Um, and they can help make it so that when you wash your wigs in that shampoo, they aren't as shiny because depending on the shampoo that you're using, if you're doing like regular people shampoo for humans, um, it can leave kind of like a greasy, oily sheen on the outside, which if you're using a wig, it's not really gonna help you make that wig look natural. Back when I was um, doing that first video, I was using a cheaper shampoo and that did definitely leave a little bit of residue on the outside, it wasn't too bad. Um, nowadays I use a little bit higher end of a shampoo and it really doesn't change the look of the wigs at all. If you feel so inclined, you can buy a synthetic wig shampoo. I believe they sell it on Arda's website. If not, you can find it on Amazon or eBay. Um, just do some searching around. I personally don't use it. Um, I just use my regular shampoo because I can. <laughs> I think some people also use like baby shampoo. Some people use fabric softener, which I'll get into later. I'm not really a fan of fabric softener and I'll talk about that um, when we get into detangling. But it's really just down to personal preference. So. Um, if you're using a shampoo that's going to leave a gross residue that makes your wig look crappy, probably look at getting a synthetic shampoo for your wigs. Anyway, back on track, um, whatever shampoo you're using, I usually just squirt like a, a little regular amount into the sink water, swish it around like this to make bubbles and to uh, distribute the soap through the water. And then I will make sure, like if I was washing this wig, which I should probably do now that I think about it, maybe you guys will have B-roll. <laughs> I just make sure that I take out any like ponytails um, or anything like that. If I was washing something like this wig, first of all, I probably wouldn't wash it. Um, these ears are like sewn in and this is like permanently attached to the wig. Um, it would kind of be a like dip the ponytail in really quick kind of deal. So you're just gonna take your wig and gently submerge it in the suds. Um, kind of do a gentle massaging motion. You don't really wanna like scrub it like you do with your hair in the shower because that's just gonna create more tangles. Um, especially if you're already, if you're dealing with a wig that's already really tangled. Uh. If you're dealing with a wig that's already tangled, you really don't wanna tangle it more. That's what I'm trying to say. And then I usually just let it soak in the uh, soapy water. It depends on how long the wig is. Um, for how long I soak it. If it's something of the length of this Incubus wig, I'd probably leave it for like 15-20 minutes. Um, if it was something really long that went down to like my waist, I would probably leave it for closer to half an hour. If it was really, really, really tangled up and it was that long, I'd leave it for like 45 minutes. So after that amount of time, I usually set a timer or else I will forget about it and like go pee an hour later and see that there's a wig in my sink. Um, I grab it by the top of the wig, so where like the skin cap is, and just gently pull it out of the water, drain the sink out, and then I run some lukewarm water and rinse it out. If it's something that I'm really worried about tangling, um, like if it's really, really long, or if it's again already really tangled, I will fill the sink again with clean water and rinse it that way. Otherwise, I just kind of do it under the faucet and rinse it out like that. Again, holding the wig from the top, I kind of start from the top and work my way down to squeeze all the water out of the wig.
Then I just lay out a towel on the floor. I'm okay with sharing my bath towels with my wigs, so usually it's just the one that I have been using. So I'll lay the towel out flat, kind of put my wig in it, fold it over so that the whole wig is covered, and then I usually step on it with my feet um, to squeeze out any extra water. Again, you don't want to rub it or scrub it in any way like you would with your regular hair if you were drying it off um, because that will create tangles and we don't want that. After that, I'll usually hang it in my shower. Um, I'll either hang it off of like the faucet or off of the shower head or off of this hook that I have in the side of my shower. Whatever is free and not covered in water that day. I just found the elastic in my wig that broke at con. There it is. It was in there the whole time. <laughs> and I am being shed all over. That's great. I really need to wash this wig. Now we're gonna be getting into detangling wigs. Um, I have detangled a lot of wigs in my day. If you guys did not know, I work at the costume shop for my university for their theater department. So um, I have detangled wigs for work before. I have detangled them for friends and they pay me for it. And I've also detangled my own. Um, so I have quite a lot of experience with detangling a lot of different kinds of wigs to varying degrees of awfulness. Detangling wigs really isn't difficult, especially if you have the patience to sit down and do it correctly. I'm not saying that I'm like a super expert on detangling wigs or anything like that, but I have done it a lot of times and I've done it professionally um, for money before, so I do know what I'm doing. I usually like to detangle my wigs when they're dry. That's just a personal preference because I worry about if they're wet, they might be more, the fibers might be more fragile. I don't really think it matters either way. Um, I just get nervous. <laughs> So I'll usually just put my wig onto a wig head and then I will put the wig head on my dress form stand. Um, there's a little hole in the bottom of the wig head and you can just stick it on any sort of stand. They do make like specific wig clamps that you can buy on Amazon. I don't really use one just because my dress form stand, you can make it taller or shorter and it's really handy. Now this is where we're gonna get into talking about fabric softener. Um, I don't really think this is a contro controversial opinion. It's just kind of a weird opinion. Um, so here's my opinion. I personally do not like using fabric softener to detangle wigs. Um, a lot of times if you look up on Google or YouTube like how to detangle a wig or a doll wig or something like that, they will suggest mixed, mixing in like a spray bottle one third um, fabric softener and then two thirds water and then shaking it together and using that to spray into your wig. I did this before at the costume shop um, for work. My boss really wanted me to try the method um, because she hadn't like seen my wig detangling skills before and she was like, I just want to make sure that we do it right, so why don't you do it this way? Um, I'd also never used fabric softener before, so I was excited to try it out. What I found with that, first of all, if you are sensitive to smell in any way, you will die. <laughs> I'm allergic to a lot of fragrances, so the whole time my hands were like a little bit itchy during it because um, you, I use my hands a lot during the detangling process, obviously, and um, putting fabric softener with that much scent in it directly on my hands was not great. It also kind of made me dizzy because it took me like four hours to do that wig. But the real reason that I don't really like using fabric softener is because I don't really find, personally, I don't think it makes that much difference in the detangling process. I don't really think it helps in any way, but it also doesn't really hurt. So it also leaves like an icky residue on the wig fibers, which is the biggest reason I don't like using it. If you have like a really awful shiny wig, um, fabric softener might be good for you because it kind of mattifies the wig. Some people, if they get like a crappy Amazon wig that looks awful, they'll like soak it in fabric softener and water and that'll help with the shine a little bit. But if you're just detangling like your run-of-the-mill Arda wig, you really don't need to use fabric softener. It feels really gross on the fibers and after I was done with that wig, I kind of tried to rinse it out but it didn't really come out all the way and it still feels like kind of weird and chalky and I just didn't really like it. So really I usually just detangle my wigs dry. If I really need to use something to like lube up the fibers, I'll just use like a children's detangling spray. I have like this swab. I don't have it up here so I can't really show you but it's like one that you would use for an actual literal child. It's from like the grocery store or something. Um, I think it's Suave brand, it has like a little fish on it and it literally just says detangling spray. Pretty sure it's just scented water. But I'll spray that on the wig section that I'm working on and that kind of helps sometimes. So when you're brushing a wig, no matter um, how long or short the wig is, this one is really itty bitty, um, but I'll still show you since this one is out. Um, I usually will, if it's a long one, 
um, I'll usually kind of section it into little parts that are about an inch thick um, because that way it makes it a little bit more manageable. Um, you just want to start from the bottom of the wig and then work your way up. Um, this one isn't very tangled so I can't really super show you. If you guys really want to see a more in-depth um, wig detangling video let me know and I can do that. This one is just like overall how to do wigs so I don't really have a lot of time to spend on just detangling. But yeah just start at the bottom of your section work all the way up to the top make sure that you really get in there by like the wig mesh and brush all the knots out. You're just gonna do that around the whole wig and eventually it will be detangled I promise. You may notice I'm holding this giant comb. Um, you really want to make sure that you're using a comb, specifically a wide tooth comb for detangling most of the time. A lot of y'all really be using brushes on your wigs and that's really not great in my opinion. Even if it says it's a wig brush or like a doll hair brush, I just don't like to use brushes. The reason is with any kind of brush that you're using, there's a lot more teeth in it and brushes are really designed to get out extra hair. I don't know if you've ever listened to somebody use a brush on a wig, like the actual physical sound of it, um, but you can literally hear like it ripping through the fibers and just tearing them out. If you're detangling a wig and you want your wig to last for a long time, I really think it's important to have a comb because this will work on separating the fibers instead of pulling them apart or pulling them out of the wig cap. Sometimes if you're detangling and you find that the knots are just like passing right through the big teeth of this, I will move down to a comb that's a little bit finer. I don't do that to start though. You really want to work your way down to the finer tooth comb from this big one, but I really just never recommend brushes. Curly wigs are a little bit different. I actually still have a whole video on how I detangle my curly wigs. I'm not planning on remaking that one at all. Um, I'll go ahead and link it in the little i card up here, so if you guys are interested in watching that one, go for it. Um, Curly wigs are just kind of a different kind of monster than like um, a wavy or a straight wig like this and like most of my wigs are. Fun fact is curly wigs are actually my favorite to detangle because it's just so nice to see the end result of that. <laughs> One last product I'd like to talk about before we get into how I store my wigs is this lovely spray. I love this stuff so much. It is called Motions Oil Sheen Spray. Um, I've had this same bottle for like four years and I'm still not out because it's really big. Um, it's just a spray kind of bottle. Um, if I remember right, uh, it's in like the ethnic hair care section, so if you're looking um, in the section where they have things for people with like really textured hair, um, I think that's where they carry that. This is like a human hair product, but I do use it on my wigs. Um, the reason I do is to keep the fibers separated, so I really only use this on my really long wigs. If the wig comes down to like my chest or longer than that, I will treat it with motions. So how I do that is after I'm done detangling and all the knots are gone, I will leave the wig on the wig head and I will just take this, give it a little shake beforehand, and then just spray it evenly on the wig. Um, it, it, it will leave kind of like a greasy-ish feeling on there. I'll do like the outside of the wig and then I'll do like the inside, if that makes sense. So like if this wig is on my wig head, I'll like spray the outside and then I'll kind of come underneath and spray down here too. I literally have a wig on a wig head, like right here. Oh my God, I'm dumb. So do the outside and then come in and go underneath here to make sure that all the fibers are coated. If it's a straight wig that you're doing, go ahead and comb through it after. Um, if it's a curly wig, I just kind of go like this really gently so I don't mess up the ringlets. Be really careful with this. Um, it's easy to over apply it. You just want it to look slightly damp. You don't want it to be wet, um, but you also don't want it to be dry because then you didn't put enough on there. Again, be careful with this because it is, like I said, kind of greasy, so it can leave your wig shiny looking. Um, so if you're using a wig that's like really cheap already and looks kind of icky as it is and is really shiny, I would try not to use a lot of this. Um, but I have really felt that this has changed um, the amount of tangles that I've gotten in my wigs. I find that when I use this on my long ones, I get way less tangles and it's really awesome. I honestly swear by this stuff and I try to push it on all of my friends. <laughs> motions, I love motions and it smells good. <laughs> okay, so finally we are moving into uh, storing wigs. Wow. So it kind of depends on the kind of wig. Um, this one is obviously very heavily styled. Um, it's kind of got this like half up, half down thing going on. This little hair piece is like permanently attached. This is permanently attached. So like this is not going into a bag. 
Um, so this along with like my mint wig just live on wig heads and they just stay in my closet. I have a huge closet um, so I have a dresser in there um, and they just kind of sit on top of the dresser against the wall so that they don't get too icky. That way I don't have to worry about ruining the literal hours of work that I've spent on that wig and my mint wig. For other ones though, they just live in the bags that I got them in. Um, so I normally keep like the wig netting that they come on. Like if you look at this um, orange wig, you can see there's like a hair net around it. Um, but for this one, I it either didn't come with one or I was dumb and threw it away. So I just kind of will fold it in half nicely and then just like chuck it in the bag Oop. and then you can just seal the top if it's a really long wig um this is my wig that i use for me 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 i don't know if you can see but it's actually in a braid in there um this one i just recently detangled after asen so i wanted to make sure it stayed looking nice um, I just put it in a braid and then put it in the bag. If you do braid your wigs, um, just be aware that when you take them out, they might have some waves in them from the uh, the braid. That's what it's called. If you store your wigs somewhere warm, um, over time it can like shape the fibers into the shape of the braid and then you might have to flat iron it later, but that's usually not a problem for me. Okay, and then this is the kind of box that I use to store my wig. Um, I think this is from like Staples or something. It just has like little things on the side that um, keep the lid in place. I have like two or three of these. I need another one because I have a lot of wigs. And then I don't know if you guys can see but on the front here I keep um, a little index card and it has all of the wigs that are in this box listed on here. Um, over many years of keeping wigs I really got annoyed with like rifling through all my boxes to find one specific wig. So I was like why don't I just label them? So I did and then if I sell one or something like that I can just cross it out and then I know it's not in there anymore so these just stack in my closet I think the brand of this is called like really useful box or something <laughs> and I get the 8.1 liter ones because I can fit like five or six wigs in here if they're nice and flat so yeah all right I think that's everything that I have for wigs again if you guys want any more detail on any of the topics that I ta uh, touched on today I know I kind of talked a lot today um, but I didn't really go fully in depth with anything except for like where to buy wigs so if you guys want a detangling video or um, a wig collection update or something just let me know down below and I can try to get to that this summer before I start college again in the fall thank you guys so much for your support it really means a lot to me um, I know I've been kind of absent around here on YouTube lately but I'm really trying to make an effort to make and post videos for you one more quick note from editing CC before I forget. Um, I hosted like a little poll thing on my Instagram. Um, I just started working on my Umbreon Gajinka cosplay. Gen can I speak correctly today? It's called a Gajinka, not a Ginjinka. Anyway, um, I'm making an Umbreon costume. It's gonna be a really big competition piece for Icon in July, which is in Winnipeg. I'm really excited about it. Um, and a lot of you guys voted that you wanted to see a full edited work log series on my YouTube. Um, so I'm going to be hopefully, hopefully, um, filming and editing that. And so that should be up late this summer or in the fall. Um, so that's just something that you guys can look forward to. If you want to see more from me, I'm very active on my Instagram, which is also at Fairy Kisu. Um, I post a lot of work in progress updates there and that's where all of my completed cosplay photos go. Um, I actually did a new Len cosplay recently. If you guys have been following me for a while, I used to do Len all the time. So um, there's photos of that up and I will have more Mew Mint pictures up soon. So I'm really excited about that. So um, if you guys want to see more of my stuff, you can follow me on Instagram. Okay. And that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.